Hello, welcome to BBC London this lunchtime. I'm Victoria Cook. First, families are still waiting to return home a year since a deadly gas explosion in South London that claimed the life of a four-year-old girl. The blast on Galpins Road in Thornton Heath forced hundreds of residents to be evacuated from their homes. The Met Police is continuing its criminal investigation into what happened. Wendy Hurrell has more. Well, fresh flowers have been brought to Galpins Road this morning, a year on from a gas explosion that killed a little girl, four years old, Sahara Salman. Behind these hoardings, three properties were completely destroyed. And at the time, it was a typical day that changed in seconds, about seven o'clock in the morning as people were preparing, getting up to go to work. Uh, this explosion happened. 500 people were evacuated from their homes along this street most of them got back home fairly quickly after that but for some it took months and you can see just across the road here there are properties still severely damaged in that blast and these people have not been able to come home yet now the Met Police started a criminal investigation into what happened here that is being assisted by the gas provider SGN but at the moment a year on local residents the families affected have not got answers as to what went wrong here. They are still deeply traumatised. I've spoken to many of them visiting here just to have a moment to remember what happened a year ago today. And later on, we'll be talking to one of the families affected uh, quite severely on that day. And that will be in our 6.30 programme this evening. And Wendy Harrell reporting there. Now, a judge has called for a review of how fast police drive when responding to emergencies after a Met officer was jailed for knocking down and killing a woman in Brixton. The officer was jailed for three years and we're only allowed to report that from today. Our reporter, Layla Hayes, joins me now to explain more. So, um, Layla, what did the officer do? Well, the crash happened in June 2021 and the court heard how on the night of the crash, PC Nadim Patel was driving at speeds of more than 80 miles per hour when his police car hit and killed 25-year-old Shante Daniel Folks. Now, this CCTV shows her just before she crossed Stockwell Road in Brixton. And as she crosses, a police car driven by another officer, PC Gary Thompson, can be seen speeding past and narrowly missing her. Moments later, PC Patel sadly hit uh, Miss Daniel Folks and killed her. Now, in February, PC Patel pleaded guilty uh, to causing her death by dangerous driving, and he was sentenced to three years in prison. On Monday, uh, PC Gary Thompson was found guilty of careless driving at the Old Bailey, and that is why we are allowed to report this now. And Leila, there are calls now for police to essentially be limited in how fast they drive for these 999 calls then. Yes, the judge sentencing PC Patel has now called for a review on 999 uh, police speeds. He said the speed PC Patel was driving at was grossly excessive, and yet officers are not bound by speed limits when responding to emergency call-outs. Uh, he said this should now be reviewed. Ms Daniel Folks had a young son. Her family say they're devastated by her loss. The Met have described her death as tragic and say they'll listen and respond to any concerns related to this incident. Layla, thank you. Former Luton Town chairman and TV news presenter Nick Owens revealed he's undergone surgery for prostate cancer. The veteran broadcaster stood down from his role at the Hatters after nine years. He was diagnosed in April. Nick is now trying to raise awareness and urging men to get checked for the disease. I had no symptoms whatsoever, but a lot of people do have some sort of symptoms. Uh, for goodness sake, speak to a doctor about it and get it checked because if it's caught early and i know it's a bit of a sort of medical cliche almost but if it's caught early you've got a chance if it's left too late you probably haven't the director of a prestigious sailing competition has said that the sport is no longer elitist after two teenagers from a state school in north london won top prizes last week christopher joel frederick and kai hockley from greig city academy in hornsey picked up trophies at the cowls regatta the week of racing's one of the longest running and most esteemed sailing contests in the world and finally, you might not know this, but today is International Cat Day. And over at Battersea Cats and Dogs Home, there are over 100 cats looking for a new home. We went to meet some of them and the special humans who are looking after them. 
So what happens is when we first get in, all the cats are sat at the front of their pens waiting for their breakfast. So first of all, the team come in, they will go around and check all the cats, make sure that they're all sort of happy and healthy after their evening snooze. And then we get on with their breakfast. And then it's on to the most important part, and that's socializing the cats. So that could be playing with the cats, keeping them mentally stimulated and enriched. It could be for some of the cats, they just want a warm lap to sit on, so we'll give them plenty of time and interaction. So this is Jaguar, um, she is seven months old. She's currently one of the cats up for rehoming at the moment. Um, so we're just doing a bit of a play session to get her to burn off some energy um, and make sure that she's not getting a bit frustrated and cooped up in her pen while she's waiting for her new home. This is one of the lovely parts of the job, actually, seeing nice healthy little kittens. They're not at the woods yet, they have a long way to go, but they've got the best possible start now. They will need 24 hour care. So we have lovely Michaela here who is <laughs> volunteering to look yeah. after them overnight and they're gonna need feeding every two, two hours. hours. Yep, throughout the night and everything. You're up for this? <laughs> they're worth it. I'm a cat foster mum for Battersea. I am fostering Kiki. How could anybody not love this adorable little fluffy? She's ready for adoption. She's ready for her new home. <laughs> I want to take them all home. <laughs> now let's have a look at the weather with Elizabeth Rizzini. Hello there, good morning. Well, our rather mixed week of weather is just set to continue. And today we've seen lots of low clouds some rather misty, murky conditions out there as captured by our weather watchers, of course, with a warm front pushing further eastwards. So as we head through this afternoon, there's always the chance that we'll see some showery outbreaks of rain on and off. Also, a good chance that we may just see a few brighter spells, but generally a lot of cloud around. The wind is set to pick up at times and temperatures won't be as high as they were yesterday. So just peaking at around 18 or 19 degrees. Now, as we head through this evening and overnight, then a lot of that cloud will start to retreat and we will see some clear spells developing. This is how we're starting off a Wednesday morning. Now, on Wednesday, it'll start to feel a little more humid. It should stay dry. There will be some areas of cloud around at times, but also some sunny spells and it will be feeling warmer too, with highs of around 24 degrees Celsius. Quite a warm and humid feeling night on Wednesday into Thursday and I think we'll start off Thursday with quite a lot of low cloud around some rather misty conditions again but we've got a southerly wind on Thursday and it's pushing us some much warmer feeling air so temperatures are likely to rise to around 26 or even perhaps 27 degrees Celsius and there will be a lot of sunshine breaking through that low cloud. It all comes to a bit of a halt though on Thursday night into Friday. That's all from us here on the Lunchtime team. Lakshmi Gopal will be here with this evening's programme at 6.30. She'll be joined by those sailing champions from Hornsey, so I hope you can tune in to hear them talking about their success. For now, though, we will say goodbye and wish you a good afternoon, whatever you're up to. Goodbye.